Hello. Today we're going to discuss lecture one of treatment of the hair and scalp. In our sixth edition of Miladies, this is chapter 11. And of course, fifth edition, fifth edition is chapter 12. Now, treatment of the hair and scalp. What is that referring to? This is referring to what the title says. How do you treat the hair and scalp? Um, shampooing, conditioning, treatments, identifying disorders, and how do we fix that? Our previous chapter, Hair and Scalp Disorders, was enlightening us on the, the disorders of the hair, from monothrix to alopecia to fragilitis cranium, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, this chapter is going to say, okay, you recognize the disorders of the hair, so what do you do about them? This is essential in client retention because it gives us a sense of how are we going to treat our clients when they come in. And if a client knows that you properly know how to treat their hair and scalp, they will come back. Okay. These are some of the learning objectives. Discuss the benefits of a shampoo. Select products of different hair types and textures. Describe proper draping procedures for various services. Identify basic considerations for performing the scalps. I mean the shampoo service. Also describe two shampooing methods. Discuss reasons why a client might find fault with a shampoo service. Describe scalp massage manipulation and techniques and also explain services that may be included in the hair and scalp treatment. So, why study treatment of the hair and scalp? As we said earlier, it helps with client retention. It helps with promoting healthy hair and healthy scalp amongst our clients. And in this chapter, we're going to go over different procedures that's going to help us to accommodate that. Okay, discuss the shampoo service. Now, the primary reason why we shampoo clients is to cleanse the hair and the scalp. Shampooing also ensures clean hair free from oils or products that can interfere with cutting tools in the haircut results. So, okay, also follow up conditioning treatments help to keep hair in healthy and manageable condition. So, as we know, sometimes when your clients come into your seat, they may have grease in their hair because they're trying to get waves or that's just their daily dressing. It's just all kind of stuff that can be in that client's hair. And of course, grease can produce buildup. So the purpose of a shampoo is to cleanse the hair and the scalp. And you are going to get your optimal service off of clean hair. So for that discriminating client that wants the best service, what we want to do is ensure that his or her scalp is clean before we proceed with the service. How do we do that? We shampoo the client. Now, a shampoo just is not good on its own. You have to choose correct product selection. Correct product selection ensures that the correct product is selected for the condition of the hair. Okay. All right. Okay. What is a shampoo? Uh, a shampoo is an oil in water emulsion with a pH range of 4.5 to 5 point, I mean to 7.5. Okay. For my level ones, you might say, what the heck is you talking about? An emulsion 
is two things that come together that really does not mix. How do they come together? Through what they call an emulsifying agent. Emulsifying agents in shampoos is usually a uh, surfactant. Um, loyal, um, laurel sulfate is a proper surfactant in shampoos. That's how you get the suds. Okay, pH. What is pH? pH is a sub, it's something called a pH scale. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14. 7 in the middle. 7 is what you call a neutral. 0 to 7 is considered acidic. 7 to 14 is considered alkaline. The normal pH for hair is 4.5 to 5.5. Conditioners is roughly 3 to 5.5. And just like we just discussed, shampoos is 4.5 to 7.5. Okay. You got your hair conditioners. What they do, they moisturize the hair and help to restore oils or proteins. Scalp conditioners, they are usually in cream or ointment form. They are available for overall scalp maintenance or to treat conditions requiring a medicinal product. Okay, now, in your book on page 277, they actually have a chart where you can, if you was the, doing your hair and scalp analysis, identify the hair type and the hair texture, it would kind of give you an idea of which type of shampoo to use. Please use that for reference. Okay, draping. Draping is something we discussed our first week of class. Draping is essential. Draping is basic. What draping does, it covers, is a covering of the client's skin and clothing with a cape and barrier at the neck band for sanitation and protection purposes. It is required for compliance with state barber laws and infection control standards in the barbershop. So, you as a master hair care specialist must know how to drape. Not only must you know how to drape, you must know which drape to use for the specific service that your client is receiving. So that's why client consultation is super because you're not going to know what service the client want until you consult with your client, until you talk to your client. Please do not wait for the instructor to talk to your client. You should talk to your client first. Then the instructor is going to come and reinforce what you have all the information that you've already divulged from your client. But do not depend on the instructor to get the information. You, it is your job to get the information because if you are a licensed barber, the instructor is not going to be there. So I know you may be afraid, but it is your job to get in the habit of conducting client consultations without the tutelage of your instructor from the day to day. Your instructor will make sure that you have the proper drape and that you are communicating with your client effectively and correctly but you have to start. Okay. Two capes that are used during different types of drapes. Um, shampoo capes and hair cutting drape capes. Shampoo capes are waterproof drapes made of vinyl that are used to protect client skin and clothing from water, liquids, and chemical processes. Hair, hair cutting capes are made of nylon or other synthetic materials. These draping fabrics are usually more comfortable for the client because they do not hold in as much body heat as vinyl capes. 
From the barber's standpoint, these fabrics are also more effective for shedding wet and dry hair. Wet hair has a tendency to stick to vinyl capes, making it more difficult to shake loose hairs off the tree. Okay, so in a nutshell, this is your difference. Shampoo capes are for wet surfaces because they are what you would call waterproof capes. Hair cutting capes is usually a cotton, nylon, or polyester blend, and it does not stick to the cape. They're more so for hair cutting services or dry services. So whenever you're performing a wet service, you're going to use a shampoo cape and any dry service, you will use a hair cutting cape. Okay. Now, right here is the five draping services that we already have gone over shampoo drape chemical drape haircut drape they said mustache or beard trim but let's say neck shave drape and the 14 stroke shave drape right now we need to be able to we should be able to properly identify each of these five draping techniques how to do them, what the purpose is of them, what is the barrier, and all of that good stuff. So we're not going to recant this. Okay. These are some guidelines for draping. First, you want to prepare your materials and supply for the services. Wash your hands, or you can sanitize your hands. If your hands are not visibly dirty, you can sanitize them. Ask the client to remove jewelry if any and store it in a safe place. So, of course, you know, loose jewelry, you want to get them out the way because they can become a hindrance to your draping service. You want to turn the co co client's collar to the inside if applicable. If your client doesn't have a collar, you don't need to do this. And then proceed with the appropriate draping method okay now there is two okay the shampoo service is very key because what the shampoo service is going to do it is going to ensure a clean scalp now, you got two shampooing methods to use. You got your reclined and inclined. Your recline method is your most common. Think of yourself in a recliner. When you're in a recliner, what do you do? You lay back. So, you usually do that through the use of a hydraulic or shampoo chair. The client's head is positioned in the neck rest of a shampoo bowl. If need be, you could put a towel in that shampoo bowl to prevent decontaminate. I meant to prevent contamination. Your incline method. Okay. The incline method is used when standard shampoo bowl is not available. It's also when the client cannot use the recline method. Client bends the head forward over the shampoo bowl sink or sink. Okay. The incline method, see if this is you're doing a beard color. And when you're doing a beard color, you want to lay that client over the shampoo bowl. What you could do, you could turn your shampoo seat around and have that client face his beard in the sink and perform an incline method. Or you can have the client lay his back forward with his face pointed towards the sink and you point your shampoo hose downward towards the sink and perform an incline method shampoo to rinse the color off of his beard okay these are the two types to the left is your recline method 
and to the right is your incline method. Now, with your shampoo and as a barber stylist, you must maintain a good shampoo posture. You want to stand close to the back of the client's head, flex the knees slightly and position the body directly over your feet. Keep your chin parallel to the floor, head raised, chest up, abdomen flat, shoulders relaxed. Do not bend or twist sideways from the waist or lean too far forward. Good posture maintains great posture during the, during the shampoo, minimizes fatigue, and those are essential for barbers. And in order to create a superior shampoo service, what is a sh superior shampoo service? It's the manner in which you apply and rinse the shampoo. You want to think about the quality of your scalp massage, temperature of the water used, and use of shampoo best suited to condition a client's scalp and hair. Now, shampoo massage manipulations are key. We're going to, in next lecture, we're going to talk about those. Okay, so this is just a recant from last chapter. Before you do a shampoo, actually, before you do anything, this is what you want to do. You want to analyze the client's hair and the scalp. You want to check for the condition of the scalp, condition of the hair, hair density, texture, porosity, elasticity, also, you want to check for any abrasions. If a client has any abrasions, please do not perform the shampoo service as this may harm the client and it may harm you as a stylist. So an astute master hair care specialist would know that before you perform this type of service, you must analyze because once you analyze, it will give you a determination of the condition of the client's scalp and if you're allowed to proceed with the service. And if so, what do you proceed with? So, okay, we're gonna stop there. What we're gonna do tomorrow on the next lecture, we're gonna discuss the shampoo procedure some conditioners and we're going to also discuss some of the products that we use here at school get you familiar with them when you get on the floor you get a better use of them but for now we need you to gain familiar familiarity with them okay